Given the vector field f defined by components x, y, find the flux across the portion of the ellipse x squared by 2 plus y squared by 4 equals 1 in the first quadrant oriented in a counterclockwise direction. So we'll start by keeping in mind that our flux integral is again a vector line integral, but this time with a normal component. So it's the line integral along C of the vector field F dotted with the normal vector N dS for arc length. And then we rewrote this in terms of an arbitrary parameter T, so it becomes the integral from A to B of the vector field F dotted with the vector y prime of t minus x prime of t dt. So this is the integral we are going to set up and then evaluate. So as always, the first thing that we want to do is parameterize the curve. So here we do not have a parameterized curve. We are simply given an ellipse in the first quadrant, oriented in a counterclockwise or a positive direction. So here, we want to keep in mind that if we're given an ellipse, and we'll do it in a general form first, if you have a Cartesian ellipse, so some x squared by a squared plus y squared by b squared equals to 1, the corresponding parametric equations in a counterclockwise direction are defined by the components x of t is equal to a times cosine of t, y is b times sine of t, and then if this is a full ellipse, it would be from t greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So those are the general parametric equations. Now we want to do it specifically, specifically for what's given. So our ellipse is defined as x squared by 2. So we can think of that as the square root of 2 squared plus y squared over 4, which is just 2 squared, equals 1. So our parametric equation x of t is going to be the square root of 2 cosine of t. The y component y of t is going to be 2 sine of t. And then again, keep in mind here, since this is restricted to quadrant 1, we have that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi divided by 2. So we have the parameterization vector r of t is defined as our square root of 2 cosine of t, 2 sine of t, or t within our closed interval from 0 to pi by 2. So we can now use this to find the tangent vector and rewrite the vector field. So using our parameterization here to find the tangent vector, we have r prime of t is defined as minus the square root of 2, times sine of t, 2 cosine of t. And now we want to be careful here, since we're finding a flux integral, we won't use the exact tangent vector, but we do use its components. So this is x prime of t and y prime of t. So we use the components of our tangent vector to define the vector y prime of t minus x prime of t. So the vector we'll use with our dot product is 2 cosine of t minus minus we'll have plus the square root of 2 sine of t. So this is the vector that we'll use with our dot product. Before we can take the dot product, we need to now rewrite the vector field. So we're going to rewrite this given vector field x y in terms of t. So again, remember we are using the components of the parameterization. So therefore our vector field is 
the square root of 2 cosine of t, 2 sine of t. And we are ready to compute the dot product. So computing the dot product for our flux integral, we know that we have our vector field in terms of t dotted with a vector y prime of t minus x prime of t. And so this is equal to making sure we have enough room here. This is equal to the vector square root of 2 cosine of t, 2 sine of t. And we are dotting this with the vector 2 cosine of t, square root of 2 sine of t. So this is going to leave us with 2 times the square root of 2 multiplied by cosine times cosine. So we have cosine of t squared plus 2 times the square root of 2 sine of t squared. So noticing that we have a greatest common factor of 2 square root 2, we can pull that out in front, which leaves us with 2 square root 2 multiplied by cosine of t squared plus sine of t squared, which we of course recognize as Pythagorean's theorem. We know it goes to 1, leaving us with 2 square root 2. And we're ready to integrate. So we're going to set up and evaluate the integral. We have our flux integral is defined as the line, the vector line integral over C with a normal component with respect to the arc length, which we converted to the vector line integral from A to B of our vector field F dotted with the vector y prime of t minus x prime of t dt. And plugging in what we just found, we have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 or of 2 times the square root of 2 dt, which is just a cute little general antiderivative. We have 2 square root 2 of t from 0 to pi by 2, which simply leaves us with 2 times the square root of 2 multiplied by pi over 2 minus 0. So we can see that our twos will just cancel each other right out, leaving us with the square root of 2 multiplied by pi. So this is our final answer for the flux across the portion of the ellipse in the quadrant 1, in a, oriented in a counterclockwise direction. Thanks for watching. Minus one on my test for poor spelling. Another.